All right, let's get started. Today, we're gonna to talk about innovation. It's a popular word and for good reason, right? It evokes hope, progress, mobility. You know, it promises solutions to difficult problems. It tells us that as human beings, there's possibility to change for the better. And we desperately need that, especially in what, all what's going on today, right? Yet today, I'm gonna to make the case that the world needs less innovation. And let me tell you why. Let's take the problem of the endangered species in Africa. You know, we are up against some serious number of challenges. The illegal wildlife poaching industry has an estimated value of seven to $23 billion. I mean, it is no wonder we are losing species at a rapid rate like rhinos, tigers, and elephants. I mean, in the last few years, millions of dollars have been invested to solving this problem. But most of the resources have been diverted to innovative tracking technologies to identify poachers entering the national reserves in Africa. I mean, these devices basically send alerts to the rangers to come and rescue these animals. Okay, here's a glitch though. While these tech saviors are working hard to innovate AI for rangers, rangers are working hard at getting their basic needs met. I mean, a recent World Wildlife Fund report surveyed 600 rangers across 12 African countries. And here's what they found. They found that 82% of rangers faced life-threatening situations while on duty. I mean, yet, they were inadequately armed, they had limited supply to access to vehicles, no proper boots, I mean, no shelter, clean water supplies. I mean, several of these workers hadn't even been paid their salaries in months and they had little to no health insurance. So tracking information on poachers was the least of their problems. This is less of an information deficit problem and this is more of a moral deficit problem. The solutions already exist, right? We just need human commitment. The innovators were actually solving problems they wanted to solve, not what needed to be solved. The fact is, solution to the world's problems have become tech-centric. When we speak about innovation today, what we're really talking about is a quick fix, right? A quick tech fix. We need to rethink what we see and value as innovation. So let's tap into some good old mythology for some inspiration, right? Some of you may have heard of this parable of the long handled spoon. Many cultures have it, including Hindu mythology. It goes something like this. A Swami asked Shiva, what does heaven and hell look like? So Shiva leads him to two doors. He opens one door and the Swami sees this large round table with a giant pot of stew, which smells delicious. The people around the table though are very thin and sickly looking, right? They're holding the spoons with very long handles. They're finding it a real struggle to feed themselves. Then Shiva opens the second door and the scene is the same. There's also a large table, you know, with stew and people with long spoons, but there's a difference. These people are plump and happy. Now the Swami is really confused. He's like, how is this possible? I mean, it's the same situation. And Shiva says, it's simple. It required one solution to learn to feed each other. So, you know, let's be honest here. How many of us would have continued to obsess about the spoon? You know, perhaps trying to bend it, curve it, break it, anything to fix that problem. I mean, this is not about being anti-tech. This is about being pro-human. Innovation here is about social ingenuity of valuing cooperation and solidarity to fix the problem. If we continue to see innovation as a proxy for new technology, we just need to have less of it. You know, to revive what innovation should really mean, 
And, you know, we need to start dismantling the popular myths around it. So today I'm going to talk about three common myths about innovation. The first myth being that innovation as novelty is essentially good. So anyone remember the buzz terms, uh, Jugard innovation, frugal innovation, there were books about it. You know, it's an idea that came about a decade ago, which put India on the map again, right? It got so many international businesses excited about doing more with less. Many examples were celebrated, uh, especially in India, right? About hacking two wheelers so entire families could sit on it. Or, you know, in Africa, the play pump innovation, which is basically uh, harnessing the energy generated by children playing on the merry-go-round so it can pump water. So there was so much romanticism around these tech interventions that they failed to see the bigger picture. What was that? It was high, very high accident rates on the road due to these safety hacks and the ethical issues of using child labor to access water, an essential human need. So the second myth is that innovation is all about product, not really process, right? In the last few years, we have seen the gig economy explode, especially during the pandemic, right? The competition is absolutely fierce on who gets the right kind of uh, app off the ground. The truth is that the innovation in the gig economy is less technological and more logistical. And there's a legacy to these delivery infrastructures. I mean, many of you already know about the Dabawala uh, service system in Mumbai, founded in 1890. It has endured famines, wars, monsoons, riots, even terrorist attacks. I mean, we're talking of 5,000 or so Dabawalas in the city delivering 130,000 lunch boxes throughout Mumbai, the fourth most populous city in the world. I mean, this was even before the mobile phone or the internet. That was no small feat. So that's innovation, right? And the third myth is that innovation is all about radical disruption. It's all about blowing the system apart. Let's replace it. Years ago, I was looking into this, um, you know, uh, latest innovation technology solutions for global education. So I was hired to interview a lot of tech entrepreneurs. And I kept hearing, you know, time and again, how education should be replaced in its entirety. In fact, you could replace it with an entire app, a school within an app. Why have teachers when we have Google? I mean, this thinking has become so pervasive, especially during the pandemic, with more than a billion edtech apps out in the market to download. Yet check it out. What we are experiencing today is a graveyard of apps. People download them and then they're quickly not used. What we need is systemic reform. It's the boring stuff, really, about teacher salaries, quality curricula, free think um, thinking away from government uh, interference, meaningful digital and social engagements. All of this requires creativity, but you know the problem are all these very essential aspects of what makes education. These issues are persistent, are chronic, are messy, and ongoing. Hardly a dream for venture capital funding, not a neat solution. Look, I know it's tempting to write this talk off as some sort of Luddite rant. I mean, the fact is though, I do love technology. I've dedicated two decades to it. I have faith in innovation, but innovation needs to go beyond tech solutionism. You know, there is no doubt about it. We need to get past our obsession with novelty, our fixation on product over process, our naivete about radical disruption. We need to see innovation as design thinking. And what do I mean by that? To understand that there is a deep interconnectedness of people, places, and problems that demand a holistic approach to solving it, right? 
innovation needs to be inclusive to privilege human well-being over the you know tech bottom line i mean imagine for a moment co-designing with the people who need it the most be it for climate change democracy financial inclusion i mean these guys are more likely to have figured out what will work and what will not and are often the most acutely aware of the impact innovation will have on their livelihoods, their mental and physical health, their communities. Innovation needs to start by asking the right questions and more importantly, listening to the answers. Perhaps then we can ask for more innovation. Thank you.